Islamophobia is clearly rife in the Conservative Party, but Labour hardly has a glowing record on the issue. We've spoken before on the show to Zara Sultana MP, who received no support from Keir Starmer when she was subjected to Islamophobic abuse. Research for the Labour Muslim Network has also found that over one in four Muslim members had directly experienced Islamophobia in the Labour Party. Some of those concerns were put to Labour MP and Chair of the Parliamentary Standards Committee, Chris Bryant doesn't have a problem, but you'll be aware of the um, survey done by the Labour Muslim Network back in 2020, 60% thereabouts of Muslim members and supporters didn't feel well represented by the party and 25% felt that uh, they had directly experienced uh, Islamophobia within the party. Nobody's ever made those allegations to me, but if, if people in my own political party have uh, problems with uh, Islamophobia, and if, that, if that's a reality, then of course they, um, that needs to be investigated. Um, I think these things on the whole, you know, the Labour Party has been investigated over anti-Semitism. I know, I know more about that, Kay. You, I, I'm afraid I wasn't uh, um, expecting you to ask me questions about this, so I'm not very well briefed on, on what you're asking about at the moment. So in other words, essentially, I had intended to come on here to trash Jeremy Corbyn and exonerate Keir Starmer. Could you ask me about Jews instead of Muslims to make that a bit easier? That's what that answer was. Now, the Labour Muslim Network were not impressed by Chris Bryant's answer, so they tweeted, this is unacceptable. For over two years, the Labour Muslim Network has been briefing Labour MPs on the problem of Islamophobia within our party and our society. Not listening is not an acceptable answer. Now, I think Chris Bryant came across really badly there. I also thought Kay Burley came across pretty poorly. Bryant is the chair of the Parliamentary Standards Committee, and he's doing a media round on Tory Islamophobia. If he's not briefed about serious allegations of Islamophobia in his own party, you should press him on why he isn't, not just let him get away with it. OK, you weren't briefed on that. Let's move on. Ash, what did you make of that exchange? I think it is depressingly typical of how the discourse around UK race relations has functioned since 2017, 2018. What has happened is that the focus on anti-Semitism within the Labour Party has gone beyond looking at the problem for what it is accurately, fairly, without fear or favour, and has actually diminished, belittled dismissed discussions of Islamophobia and anti-blackness in particular, both when you're looking at it at the level of the entirety of society and British institutions, but also within progressive circles. One of the things that you will often hear from people who are talking about the Labour Party and anti-Semitism is no other minority would be treated this way. And I wrote an article about this, I think about a year ago. And the problem with that is that it's, I think, wholly misleading because when there was a report looking at Muslim Labour Party members' experiences of Islamophobia, it had nowhere near the kind of media coverage, attention, or outrage as any such document produced around the time of the Labour anti-Semitism crisis. Uh, when Channel 4 did a dispatches into Tory party Islamophobia, I was not asked to do any media. I was not asked to talk about uh, my experiences as you know, a Muslim in the public eye, but I was invited many times to discuss Labour and anti-Semitism, including being asked to come on to Victoria Derbyshire for a special hour and a half long programme after the Labour anti-Semitism panorama aired. So there was a hierarchy of racism being established, which let people of colour know where we were that we were at the bottom. And unfortunately, it wasn't just people within the media I saw perpetuating this hierarchy. It was people within so-called progressive circles as well. There was a human rights lawyer saying that when uh, people talk about Windrush, it is a form of whataboutery to distract from Labour anti-Semitism. I've seen people uh, you know, say that if you are black or if you are Asian, if you are visibly ethnic, then of course your experiences of racism are instantly recognized and people are on your side, which is just 
delusional, actually, if, if you're a person of colour, because you just have to look at the Labour Party. I'm not talking about uh, the Conservatives anymore. I'm talking about Labour to see that there has been a consistent problem with Islamophobia. You had an uh, election campaign being run in order to protect the career of Phil Woolas, which was based on, and I quote, from somebody who worked on that campaign, getting the white vote angry. Keep the focus on the so-called Muslim problem. Uh, you've had patterns of Islamophobia being kind of accepted, turned a blind eye to. Uh, Trevor Phillips, who referred to British Muslims as a nation within a nation, being readmitted to the party under Keir Starmer. And there has never been any sort of reflection on whether the fact that we as a country were taken to war by a Labour government on false pretenses, hundreds of thousands, if not a million Iraqis dead because of it, a region destabilized, and that all the people involved in that decision enjoy perfectly comfortable roles in public life. And whether we have turned a blind eye to that bloodshed, that, that crime against humanity, because the victims of it were overwhelmingly brown and Muslim. We have never asked that question about the Labour Party and whether that is indicative of a culture of racism amongst the party and amongst the media which covers that party. And so I think what happened with Chris Bryant in that interview with Kay Burley is, again, it is just part of that same depressing pattern in which it's made very clear to Muslims in this country that Media doesn't give a shit about racism against you and the Labour Party doesn't give a shit about racism against you. Mm -hmm.